Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land Cattle Company. Today I'm gonna take you over into our transitioning to silvo pasture field. That's where the cows are going. Our days are numbered as far as stockpile goes. This field here, this is what's left. I'm gonna take them out of here, move them into the field over here. I wanna talk about winter lice and cattle. Hey, Red. Hey, honey. You're getting tamer, aren't you? You're getting tamer. Yes, that's a good girl. Where's C-162 at? Over here she is. Let's go see if she'll let me pet her. I've got four cows now that will let us pet them. Hey, girl. Hey. What? See? Good girl. Okay, um, watch to the end. We're gonna have a time lapse of them in here and there's gonna be lots of rubbing and scratching. And let's go ahead and get these girls moved. We'll see what happens here. Cause I gotta move them out to the end here, up and then down an alleyway. And our water's over here. It's on 120 foot hose. It is not froze and it's 15 degrees out this morning. So just, just so you know, we still have those valves available and we're actually checking right now to see if we can uh, ship internationally. I don't know what that's gonna entail. I know it's gonna, the shipping's gonna cost more naturally, but if you can, please subscribe like comment share with a friend hit that notification bell it really really helps us out and another thing that i've been asking viewers to do is leave a comment in the videos that you'd like to see we've had a lot of really good suggestions and i'm going to follow through with those videos so if there was a video that you commented on and with a video suggestion I'm gonna go ahead and do that video for you because I don't know I only have like three or four that you guys have suggested but every one of them has been good one was economics of cow calf you know whether or not the small producer can send to the sale barn make any money another one was natives and then I can't remember what the other one is some of the other ones were but they're all good suggestions and I think everybody's gonna like them so I'm gonna go ahead and do those and of course whenever you let the cows out they like to try to go caddy corner for some reason I don't know why come on girls Come on, girls! There's old Blueberry, she's in the front. She's in heat today. She was in heat about 10, 10 days ago or so. So she's got, uh, she's got cysts. And she's not gonna breed this year or next year. We're gonna have to, hate to get rid of her. That's the first cow that was born on this farm. Her mom's mom. <coughs> It's the first cow that we've ever artificially bred. And then Blueberry was the first cow born on this farm. So it's kind of a double-edged sword on keeping her. Love to keep her, but I mean, she's not gonna make any money for us. So we need to actually get rid of her, unfortunately. If anybody has any heart nuts and could send me some sign would please get a hold of me i'd really i really would like to have some uh cyan wood from park nut trees i'll have to go back and get the water tank of course and 
if you've probably noticed the cow herd's smaller. There's probably, I don't know, maybe seven or eight animals that need to come back into the herd, their calves. They'll come back into the herd um, whenever we start calving here this spring. That's pretty much the herd we have to work with. We should have, I don't know, close to 30 calves this year, which isn't a lot, but better than nothing. As I said in a previous video, it's better to sell high and buy low. And we don't buy, so we'll just have to build low. Okay, I'm surprised here. I'm actually really surprised. I want to talk about mites a little bit. Start scratching this time of year. And that doesn't automatically mean that they have mites, okay? It means their hair is coming off, they're getting ready to shed out, and they're itchy. And I can't say as I blame them. And I'm gonna show you a cow here. She got up against a tree just in moving. You've seen her rubbing on a tree. Um, in the last video, you can see the marks on her neck there. Well, here's one that's rubbing. Uh, here's one over here. These girls will have all the hair rubbed off their necks. They'll look pitiful. You know, they're itchy. I can't blame them. I can't say as I blame them one bit. Yep, see, got one itching over here. So just because they're itching and got bare spots doesn't mean they have mites. And typically, if you have mites, um, they'll have bare spots in around their tail head and on their pins. That's typically where, and then you'll also have them in the crack there where her leg and udder rubbed. You'll also have uh, bare spots in there and it'll be, be itching as well in there. So you can tell that none of these girls, we used to have a mite problem um, many, many moons ago, but we don't have that any issues anymore. So, but, okay, this field here, and I've talked about it in the past, we'll talk a little bit more in depth here. Two and a half acres, I do believe. And it was pretty much all wooded. You can see all the stumps in here. It was all wooded from, no, not the whole thing. The front out front there, there was a, there's an apple orchard. And there's apples back here as well, um, a few apple trees. What happened here, and the reason we took it out of, or we cut all the trees in here, we have brush piles all over the place. We have some model flower rows coming in. I'm gonna try and get those cut off. I'm just trying to decide what would be the best options for that. I think for what we got here, I think if we come in here with a couple weed whackers with a brush blade on, we could knock them down pretty quick. So I think that's probably what we'll do. Me and Walker will come in here and and cut them off. The reason we had to cut this is, this was probably 25% ash trees, and we left whatever was was uh, not diseased or anything, and those were oak trees. Oak trees, and we did cut the aspen down because they were way out of control. There was 25% ash trees in here, and we all know that the emerald ash borer come through a number of years ago and killed most all the ash trees. and. Um, there was an ash tree standing up in here. It was the biggest tree that I know of on this farm other than an oak tree over here uh, that's almost seven feet across, but it's hollow. This uh, ash tree, I don't know what it was, probably five feet across, and it died. So I started cutting these ash trees out. And whenever, the, you know, you talk about the symbiotic relationships between the trees and different things, as soon as these ash trees started dying, it stressed the black cherry. Most of the trees that was in here were black cherry trees. As soon as the ash started dying and stressing, it stressed the cherry trees out and the peach bark beetle come in and it just wreaked havoc. Let's go look at a stump here real quick. You take this, this here was an ash tree, or not an ash tree, this is a cherry tree stump. And no, it was double, it was a double here, you can see. Um, I bore cut everything and you need to leave a good hinge on it. Now this one here, I back bypass cut it, cut, and if OSHA were to come in and see that, I'd be written up. Um, you're not supposed to bypass whenever you put your notch in. But anyhow, these two trees here, the gum or the snot, it looked like clear snot, but it was gummy. And 
around the base of these trees, there'd be like 25 gallons of stuff. It'd be up about that high and then it'd be on all the bark. And so they were diseased and it was gonna kill them anyhow. So I just went ahead and cut them and opened this up. And if I can find a picture, I have a picture of a log laying down flat with the gum on it. It's just unbelievable how much gum was in these and how bad the peach bark beetle attacked. I mean, it was, it was bad. We did that and then oh, over the course of the next couple years, I got all the brush pushed up into piles so that we could open this up and start grazing it. Two years ago, we fed hay pretty much on everything that we could get this side by side on. And I haven't put any seed in here. And this is our most productive field, I must say. It's one of our best fields. Um, it really, really grows a lot of grass. Uh, honestly, I don't, I think it's mostly Timothy. We grazed this three times last year and there's still about 24 inches of grass. Just a tremendous field. You know, there's frost on the ground. You can't really see it too much, but there is earthworm castings and earth or night crawler middens. That's a night crawler midden there. And what that is, if you don't know what a night crawler midden, that is um, their house. What they'll do is they, they clump together organic material and then they pull that back down over top of the, their hole that way whenever it rains and stuff it can't get down in so it kind of seals them in and keeps them from flooding out so anyhow that's that's what i wanted to talk about on this field Talk to you later. I gotta get the water and I gotta find my, my uh, uh, mineral tub. I don't know where I put it at. So, okay, we'll talk to you. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Have a good one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. You think we did a good job down in the bottom? There's a super thanks button. You can click on that and give us a tip if you'd like, but it's not absolutely necessary but we do appreciate the subscriptions, you know, if you subscribe and comment with there any videos that you may be interested in seeing, and we'll see if we can get those done for you. Okay, see you later guys, bye.